right here. And the, where are you here? The, uh, there we go, smells uh, Loki, the logistics Loki. So the Loki is using a uh, tinker tactic that allows him to run remote reps as well as a really strong local rep by being fed capacitor from the rest of his team. The PL team at this point has realized that there's no way that they can break through this tank normally. So they've actually started trying to bump Schmel's Loki away, as you see a big bump there from the golem. Their goal is to get the Loki far enough away from the golem so that he can't be repped. Meanwhile, the afterlife are trying to keep all the team close together. They don't have uh, prop mods to make their ship move faster, so they're just having to move all the ships as much as possible to avoid the bumps and keep them alive. Uh, and this is actually what caused the uh, Loki to eventually die for smell. We had made all these guesses about whether it was overloading or anything like that, but it actually wasn't. It wasn't a mistake from afterlife. They piloted it perfectly, but what just happened was they ended up getting bumped by Pandemic Legion in what was a pretty desperate tactic. So you see here another bump coming in and smells Loki here. At this point, he's getting pretty far away from the golem of Jonathan Kane, and uh, as soon as he gets out of the uh, energy transfer range of the golem as he keeps moving there from the bumps that means that he's losing one of the uh, energy transfers coming to him and he just can't keep his tank going through the DPS through all that and so it's only going to be a few moments now before you see him start to uh, drop and this is actually the explanation for uh, what happened with that Loki and I think it's a really cool way of viewing as we see another bump there coming up against the goal and to move it further away a really cu cool view of something that we often don't see on the tournament stream because it's a bit harder to show in the UI um, but it's great tactics used by these very experienced tournament teams that have practice these setups a lot of times before and there goes the Loki and this is one of the many many moments that we often miss and that everyone can easily miss in a tournament stream in a tournament environment uh, and really shows the skill on both sides both of these two teams were actually incredibly impressive in this fight and I'm sure both of them are going to be uh, having some great matches further on so thanks for watching this if you want to see more of these 3d viewings uh, take a look at null-sec.com it's a third-party player-made site that uses the crest information that we send out to, uh, available to everyone freely and uh, they've done some really amazing things with it Thanks for joining me.
Welcome back, one and all. This is CCP Fozzy, joined now by a new commentator, Sir Squeebles. Uh, say hi to everyone, Squeebles. Hey, everyone. Uh, and uh, we are here to bring you Agony Empire versus Circle of Two. This is the beginning of the last quarter of this weekend, uh, the first weekend of the 12th Alliance Tournament. Uh, Agony Empire have brought a uh, super heavy uh, Vindy Navy mega, Navy mega setup, and Circle of Two have brought Foons, which will probably be kiting, so it's going to be a very fun match to watch those uh, two combine. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Circle of Two setup, Squeebs? Uh, the Circle of Two have brought uh, Typhoons, which we've seen previously in the tournaments with mixed success. Uh, they have been really susceptible to the damps. You don't get the liberties that you can take with things like the rattlesnakes where your drone DPS will travel. Um, you do see Agony fielding as Celestis, so we'll have to see how they spread that pressure across the Foons and the Oneros, and if they do it effectively, it can have a huge impact. Mm -hmm. We're now 30 seconds away from uh, the beginning of the match. Agony Empire's full team is Vindicator, Navy Mega, Eos, and Neros, Double Vexer, and then that Celestis that'll be very key, uh, and uh, Triple Vengeance and Merlin. They probably are going to have damps on the Vengeances as well, and probably the Merlin, which is going to make it very difficult for those Foons to lock. So you're going to have to watch the effects uh, appearing in the middle of your UI at the bottom of the screen on the stream. Uh, when you see the damp icons appear beside Circle of Two ships, that's going to be very, very important. And interestingly, there's really not the right amount of tackle on the Circle of Two side to screen these Vindicators. Normally, you could mm -hmm. get a tanky Assault Frigate in to cycle that scram to slow them down. They don't really have that option. Yeah, at this point, they're going to have to rely on the speed of the Foons, I think, to keep range. And they are launching their cruise missiles. We're going to have to see. It looks like the first target is going to be the Navy Mega, as we see the uh, target painter on it. Um, interesting first choice. I kind of would have expected maybe uh, going after the Aneros first, but we'll see how well it tanks. Well, like I always say, don't worry about the logic, just do what's in your heart. Some of these foons were a little bit slow off the line, though. Um, they look like they're still positioned pretty well, so for the most part, okay piloting. Actually, no, two typhoons uh, <laughs> sitting still. And just got caught by a Vindicator. They now have a Vindicator on top of them. Uh, yeah. That's not the news you want to be telling your team captain on comms. Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, so this Navy Mega is taking some damage, sorry, and uh, the Vindy is taking a little bit of shield damage. Not sure why, but one frigate is going down, which... Um, while that doesn't matter currently, it will matter later in the match as this tackle has to burn down the last of these foons. But this first foon of B3NT is getting hammered right now. Yes, so he's get, taking the full brunt of the damage. It, he did get reps on him now from the Aneros. The Aneros is a little bit slow getting the reps on because of the damps applied to him. But the Aneros is also tackled and uh, being neutered and uh, damped. So it's going to be difficult for him to uh, keep active in this fight without getting himself into some pretty severe danger. And looking over now at the stream, I can see the uh, on-screen effects. You've got three Typhoons. All of them are webbed. The Vindy, or sorry, the Oneros is webbed. It's neutered. It's nost. It's damped. Uh, and probably dunked shortly thereafter. Yeah, meanwhile, the uh, Navy Megathron of Galvidia there is holding on just fine. They've lost now a Vengeance, so that's first blood going a circle of two. But a Typhoon is about to fall, and that's a really bad trade for CO2. Uh, they don't want to be uh, having that choice. And uh, that's a lot of DPS off the field for them. Yeah, and you've got to wonder, I mean, what was this Ashmu supposed to do? I mean, he, ha he has the webs, right, which could be used super effectively. He's only got two ships that he really has to screen to mitigate damage. If he could effectively slow down the Vindy and the Navy Mega, that's a lot of DPS that he could have spared off those Foons. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the Foons sat still, and they made his job difficult, and I guess he decided it wasn't worth it after all. Yeah, the Ashimu actually did get all the way across the field and has gotten on top of the Agony, Emp Agony Empire and Neros. So he's actually done a pretty good job there of being a big problem for that Neros. He's using the newts, he's using the webs, and they are going to be bringing down the Neros because of that. Uh, the Neros for Circle of Two on the other side has been taking damage for a while, but it's actually not going down nearly as fast. So once that Neros goes down for Agony Empire, that means that all of those frigs and vexers are going to be very vulnerable. Uh, I missed the bumps earlier in the PL match. Maybe I missed something here. But why, of all the ships, why the Navy Mega? I mean, the, most likely the tankiest. It's got an additional one low slot over top of the Vindicator. Um, and it doesn't have the web bonus that makes the Vindy so deadly. So if you were going to target one of the battleships to make sure your foon's applied, why the Navy Mega? Why not the Vindy? Yeah, I think that is a very good question. The Vindy would seem to be a uh, better choice for a primary. They did end up switching the Aneros, which is good. Uh, now they're gonna, going after Vexers, which is another good choice. But yeah, that initial shooting at the Navy Mega seemed like it was a bad idea. Potentially, it was the only thing they could lock at the time, but I did actually see the Vindy get up really close to those uh, foons very quickly, so they probably could have shot at it as well. Uh, this Ashmu being saved to last, hopefully they kill that and leave a frigate so they have time to scoop all the mods on field because it doesn't look like 
there's really a chance uh, to pull back if you're if you're CO2 at this point. I think you're you're pretty much out of luck. Um, but this last typhoon is about to go down. The mm-hmm. ash moved right in the middle, so uh, he's gonna, as an act of solidarity, stay there and and die right after. Um, not sure I understand the target calling in this match. Uh, they were both very viable, especially with all that DPS tied up in the battleships. One of the few things that the typhoons can apply to right off the bat is the battleships. Uh, I unfortunately didn't have the stream view up. I didn't see where the damps landed. Were they immediately on the Typhoons? They were the immediately on the Typhoons, yep. They got them on the Foons and the Aneros right off the bat, uh, which is exactly where they wanted them to be. That being said, the Foons obviously could still apply to the Navy Mega, which was a ways away. So uh, at this point, I mean, uh, the majority of the time, I would say Typhoons have been defeated by simple damps. I mean, not carries, not anything crazy, just simple low point T1 damping ships have shut down the entirety of your DPS, which kind of makes you wonder if Typhoons maybe uh, not going to be so popular from here on out, maybe? Yeah, I mean, Typhoons do have a lot of big advantages. The cruise missiles and the speed allow them to project along across long ranges, but uh, of course they are very vulnerable to those dams. And that's one of the reasons we're seeing so many drone ships in this tournament so far, is that they have the big advantage of not being nearly as vulnerable to dams. You can assign your drones to a friend and then use those to uh, get around the EWAR. And that's always been something that's been very popular in the tournament, too. Dodge electronic warfare, whether it's ECM, whether it's uh, damping, tracking, disrupting, drone ships have that resistance, while uh, foons uh, are very, very vulnerable to the dams. Well, if the FC uh, needs any talking points or screaming points, as the case might be, uh, the speed on those typhoons at the beginning of the match was, well, the the lack thereof, I guess, was a little disappointing, and uh, they maybe want to think about that before they go into their next match, as they will be knocked down to the loser's bracket for next weekend, but... Ultimately, uh, I think people need to, to look at a lot of these setups and think about E-War, and that's done really effectively by the higher tier teams, but you see things like a Mollus that, that can just wreak absolute havoc for so little points. Um, it's, it's really dangerous, and it kind of baits the question of, can we really go with a high slot all-in team, or do we need to look at more drone-friendly metas to avoid some of the damp you were. Mm-hmm. Or find ways to get in and kill them. You can With an effective group of assault frigs, you can get in and kill some of these frigates off fast. Celestis is, of course, a little bit uh, more durable, but then also in danger of being counter-damped. If you have your own frigates with uh, damps, they can get on top of the Celestis faster. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of those damp wars. We saw two very good teams earlier today, Afterlife and PL, managing to ban out almost all of the bonus damp ships in the game, as their ban list included the Celestis Celestis, the uh, Mollus, and the Carries. And uh, obviously a lot of these teams are very concerned about Dant, and we're probably going to keep seeing that. You can see, though, one... Uh, oh, I was about to say it's a tactical error, <laughs> but it seems that they have pulled it back. They're about to kill the last ship before they got to loot the uh, loot the field. So mm-hmm. the FC has called a stop on that. A very good call, and you can see the uh, tournament experience coming through, so everyone can take home uh, extra risk. Yeah, especially in this tournament, we're seeing a lot of augmented drones. Although there aren't any that I can see on the field here. Those are always very valuable. Uh, while they're doing the looting here, Sir Squeebles, um, what match are you most looking forward to in the second half of today? Well, I don't know. I, I, I have trouble gauging like which one is, is the most interesting. Um, I would be lying if I didn't tell everyone, yeah, I have that part of the day where Hydra plays. <laughs> so I guess I'll just be honest and not clever and say probably the Hydra match. I think that's going to be a very common answer to that question if we ask a lot of the viewers that right now. Hydra Reloaded versus Triumvirate, uh, those are two teams that uh, I think a lot of people are expecting to be top five. Um, Hydra Reloaded, of course, having uh, won a previous Alliance tournament and come second in two others. They've actually never come in any position lower than second in an Alliance tournament, which is a pretty impressive pedigree. And I don't think that will change here, though. I will add to the end of that that uh, I'm looking forward to Surely You're Joking and Almost Awesome for being a great name matchup. And also yes, RVB versus Code, because I think Code is going to bring 12 uh, Suicide Gank and Catalyst. Yeah, and we're going to get to see what they're going to bring very soon, because this match is now finished, and we're going to send you back for some ads, and then be back in just a few minutes for Red versus Blue versus Code.